thought I'd give you guys a little update on the farm. Things are going great out here. We got a bit of stuff done this weekend. I unfortunately didn't vlog, but I'll go ahead and show you guys what all we got done. Karma went to his new home last week. He's doing great. He settled in nicely. Sophie and Mocha are back to their normal selves. Just the two of them now, so we are fully ready for when we bring home our new fainting breeders, which I'm really excited about. I'll go ahead and show you guys. We're getting four breeders. The first one is a gray, it's like a blue gray tri buck born last July. So he will be ready for breeding as soon as we bring him back. So whenever it's time for breeding, he'll be ready. And then we have a black and white doe. But what's really exciting is she's got blue eyes. Now, all of the breeders that we are getting, they are heavy carriers of the blue eye gene. So while the buck, the older buck that we're getting, does not have blue eyes, he carries the gene. There's a lot of his, um, a lot in his line that has blue eyes. So we've got the buck born in July, the gray tri, the black and white doe with blue eyes. Then we have the younger two that just were born uh, about a month ago. They'll be ready to go uh, the first weekend, the first, the second, first or second week of June. But first up we have a doling. She is uh, blue gray. Her mom is a very, very rich, dark denim blue uh, gray. I think that's the coloring. I think that's what the coloring is called and she has blue eyes, which is exciting to me. And then the last of the four is a black and tan tri buckling. And he unfortunately does not have blue eyes, but he is also a carrier. That, gi that will give us in grand total for our entire herd, two bucks and four does for breeding. And I think that'll give us a really good foundation I'm really excited because these lines have really good deep bodies, nice coloring, and blue eyes. And, and actually, so what's really exciting about the uh, the the doling, the blue gray doling, is her mother produces very lovely cashmere in the winter. What you guys may not know is that fainting goats can actually be a tri-purpose breed. Now I have a friend who actually raises and breeds fainting goats and she uh, uses them, uh, she said they actually produce very lovely milk. So we, you can raise them for meat, for milk, and also cashmere, which is, um, it, you can use like wool. Actually a quadruple, um, uh, it's actually used for four, um, that goes, fainting goats are also actually used for four reasons. Oh, what's the fourth? Babies. Babies. <laughs> that is true, babies, yes. <laughs> what? The cow's doing great, Annabelle's doing great. Annabelle's calf is doing excellent. We still haven't decided on a name for him. Uh, we were kind of joking around with the idea of possibly naming him Sirloin, Knight of the Round Plate. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. <laughs> um, he is, um, he will be getting steered out and his intended purpose on the farm is to ultimately go to the freezer. He will be our beef. So we are just giving him a name for reference. He is not staying. All right, so I got my pruners, got a bucket of water. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess of the mulberry that I'm not wanting to keep on and stick them in the water so we can propagate them. So you kind of see these, these roots that it's, it's trying to put off. That's actually a good sign. That means this might actually root pretty well. Okay, we got all of our cuttings in here right now. That leaves us with four. And I like how they're growing up and then we'll just kind of continue to train them into the shape of a tree. I'm actually gonna cut it right above. You can see these nodes in here. 
when you're when you're pruning to try and get it to branch out you want to cut like right above one of those nodes and I could actually probably propagate propagate this cutting that I just took off and you don't want to make a straight cut you want to make a diagonal cut I don't know why but there is a reason behind it plants do better for some reason we'll see how this prune does how it uh, opens it up, encourages it to grow out more and branch out. And then we can start training it. That would be so awesome. I'm not a professional arborist. I have tried to do some research and this might not be the most accurate way to cut it, but do your research, do your research. Got it pruned, it looks a lot cleaner. I'm excited to see how it grows out. I've seen some very beautiful fig trees that have been pruned to be more like trees and less like bushes. So I'm really excited to see how this grows out. Um, I probably could have cut it down to one, but I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to kind of see if I could get it to grow out with multiple brand, multiple stalks, but still make it look like a tree. I don't know how to explain that, but look at all these cuttings. And I've got them soaking in a bucket of water. I'm going to bring these home and um, I can root possibly a majority if not all of these and propagate to have a whole new batch of fig trees that I could plant around the farm if to friends and family so that's that's a lot look at all of them look at all these these pieces in here that I might be able to propagate that would be so awesome I literally took one of our other trees out back at home uh, one single branch had laid down on the ground and had subsequently been buried over time and it sent out roots and there was multiple nodes coming off and I actually cut each node off with the roots, stuck them in uh, potted uh, and soil in pots and I actually was successfully able to propagate five new fig trees from that one branch. So like that's, imagine how many I can get from this. That's exciting. Hello. Okay, well, never mind. I actually just got a call from our plumber. I've got to meet them in town to get the permit application from them. So I guess I'll transplant it next time. But that's okay. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Leon's actually currently watering the fruit trees right now to give them a real good deep soaking. Uh, when you're watering fruit trees, it's better to give them once a week really good deep soak. Um, drink as for instead of like daily short drinks you want to give them at least like once a week really good deep soaking drinks so he's watering them right now making sure they get their good deep drink and we're gonna go get our plumbing <laughs> permit application things are starting to really pick up right now we've actually I don't know if you saw or you hear in the background but our pad guys out here working there was a slight um, he, we had to bring in more dirt, so he's working right now on getting the pad squared away while we finish getting the permit applications complete, which we're almost ready to submit these permit applications. We're getting all of the details and stuff together, then we gotta sit down with our uh, general contractor and go over everything, make sure we filled everything out correctly, and then submit them. So all the fruit trees are doing great. Here's one of our other fruit trees. Apple still hasn't bounced back. I'm still trying to remain optimistic because whenever I checked there was still green underneath so there may be a chance that it survived. I'm being hopeful. Then our custard apple. This one this is doing great. It's growing in nicely. Sent off some shoots. I actually need to prune off this dead piece right here to encourage all the new growth to come out, but it's it's looking fabulous. I'm, I'm really, really excited to try this. Um, should get fruit in about two years on that one, which seems like a long time, but well worth the wait.